So we're gonna go over brushes today. This is a pretty brush. This is a Wooster brush. So the pretty brush doesn't have an angled sash. Angled sash means it's cut at an angle that way. These are both two and a half inches, two and a half inches. Uh, these are what our guys normally use. If uh, we have a guy that's been painting for a long time, this is what they like, but they like it in the three inch. Little, it holds a little bit more paint and they can go in. Um, guys that have been growing up with this, have been using this forever. Ian is one of them. Uh, this is what he likes and they use it quite a bit. This is a Wooster. Um, this will probably seen better days. Probably get rid of this one. We'll probably throw this one. Um, this is a stain brush. So this obviously is a big brush. It sits in our Sasquatch out, out front. Actually, he holds it. Um, but we, they have four inch ones. This is a seven inch. So this is actually be good for deck boards, whole deck boards. Um, you can get a longer handle, put it on, and then do full deck boards with this. And then there's a five inch, a four inch to kind of get into um, the smaller spaces. Well, you don't want to use the stain brush because the stain brush is actually built, the fibers in the, in the bristles are actually built for like an oil base where the fibers in these bristles are built for like a latex water-based paint. Um, the paint holds a little bit better. If you would put oil in this, like a stain in this, it would just seep out and drip out and you'd have a mess. This actually holds it a little bit better, a little bit more coarse. Um, but cutting in with something like this would be a lot more difficult than cutting in with something like this. So if you are gonna stain, like with an oil-based product, this is probably not the best bet. Um, I would definitely use something a little bit, a little bit different, more like this kind of brush. As you, as you can see, it's a little bit different. Definitely a lot thinner than that, so. I personally like the three inch angled. So like it's a three inch brush like this. Um, so it'd be about that much wider. And then the angled sash, that's just cause that's what I, we use is the angled sash. Um, I do like to put the screw in it. I use it for my finger and then you can hang it on the bucket too. Um, they also make a, a different brush. It's a blue tip that we carry. And so you have the sash and then there's just a blue tip for cutting in. It's a, it's a little bit easier, um, but I do like the angled sash more than the straight. The straight's all right. Um, I can use the straight if I have to, but I do like the angled sash. I just think I have more control over the brush with it. If you're looking at brushes, don't, um, there's a million different brands. You gotta try ones that fit right. Um, there's different different ergonomical versions. Like this is this is your standard brush, your wood handle. Um, some of them have the shorter handles. Uh, you're holding a brush like this, so the shorter handles help some people. Rolling Dog has one with it's actually a curved handle where it fits into your into this little pocket, and you can actually but. Find one that, you're gonna, that feels comfortable in your hand because you're gonna be holding it for a long time. You don't want your hand to cramp. I know that sounds weird, but I, I promise it does happen. Um, but yeah, just find ones that work for you and don't, don't think that Purdy or Wooster are you know, your, your only go-tos. If you find one that you like, Proform makes really good brushes as well. Um, and I, like I said, Rolling Dog, they do relatively cheap and, and good, good products, so. Just know like with any kind of paint brushes or any kind of materials, it's just like a tool. So you get what you pay for. Obviously some of the paint brushes, um, when I first started, I got a little carried away, about a $120 paint brush made out of horse hair. It, it, it's a good brush, but um, it's, it, it's comparable to your Woosters. I mean, your top of the line is gonna cost you, you know, 20, 25 bucks. And those are, those are good. Those are gonna last, they clean really well. But if you're looking for like a one and done thing, um, your Wooster Silvers, you can usually get for about $9. Um, or Rolling Dog makes really good products that are, that are relatively cheap. So no, I wouldn't say that there's an absolute best. Uh, I go back Wooster Pretty, basically whatever's available. Just make sure like you know about the brush and you know it's gonna fit your needs because different brushes do different things. Some of them are made for stains, um, oil-based stuff and some of them are made for like the latex paint. So make sure you know your bristles. You want uh, a natural bristle brush is gonna cost a lot more than a synthetic. Synthetic, you know, there's not a lot of difference anymore, but if you're old school, you wanna go with that natural bristle brush. So if you clean them, it's, uh, 
It really depends on the quality of brush you get. So like if we have these, these are uh, Proform stain brushes. You're gonna clean these with like mineral spirits, um, sometimes lacquer thinner, something a little bit harsher than, than soap and water uh, because it's an oil base. Uh, if you see back a long time ago, they used to use gasoline and clean their brushes. Uh, but uh, what it does is you gotta be really careful. You don't wanna go too, th too harsh because what it, this is all glued into here and it'll actually eat that glue out and you'll actually have chunks of bristles coming off um, probably your third to fourth time using it, um, especially if you store it like this. After you clean it, you always wanna store it down or hang it like that. Make sure you form the bristles so you're back here so you don't get any crazy, crazy hairs like this one has. Um, if you get those, you can cut those away and then continue to use them. This has probably been used, you know, five or six times. They've, they've done a decent job cleaning it, but we go through them quite a bit. I would, I budget for, you know, new brushes almost every paint job, just because, if you, and then if you do, you wrap them in plastic, you can clean them a little bit later. But to be honest with you, my guys will wrap them in plastic and then they'll leave and then they'll clean them in the morning which is not a good habit to get into, so don't do it. Um, but uh, I do have some guys that come back and clean them right away though. Uh, but if you, use, if you go out and get uh, a good brush, you know, your $20, $25 brush, it'll last you a DIY person probably a long time, years, if you clean it right away, soap and water. Um, they do make special soap to clean brushes. I've learned on just soap, as long as you get it all out, it cleans really well. It, I haven't had any issues with that either. Um, but yeah, make sure you store them like this. Don't store them down so it's sitting like that or something where the bristles are gonna get all mangled. Just make sure you kind of hang it. And then once it's dry, um, you can spin it after you, after you uh, wash it to get more, most of the water out and then either hang it, but don't just, don't let it just sit like that. It'll, it'll mess up the bristles, so. But take care of them the last few years. If you don't take care of them, one or two paint jobs. If you guys want more content like this, I know it's exciting brush content. Um, like and subscribe. See you guys later.